Hey y'all, it's Crystal. Welcome back. This video is going to be my labor and delivery video, including footage from my delivery. I am officially a mom of two beautiful, beautiful girls, and I wanted to share my experience with y'all. Um, if you like this video and want to see more videos, hit the subscribe button and follow me on social media at so Chris so we can chat more there. So a little bit of history. I had Lola seven years ago. I had to have an emergency C-section with her because her heart rate, her heart rate was dropping. And um, then I also was not aware of my options. I was not as medically inclined as I am now. And so I didn't know um, that I had a choice in certain things. That being said, this time I wanted to do what's called a VBAC. It's a vaginal birth after C-section. Um, I know that C-sections are a major surgery. You're literally getting your abdomen cut open and um, the recovery from that is pretty difficult. So I wanted to try to have a vaginal birth this time. So I spoke it over with my doctor who was really, she was really great. And I let her know what my concerns were and she was very supportive. So her only stipulations for having a VBAC were I could not be induced, I had to go into labor on my own, and I had to have an epidural. So my due date was June 17th and my C-section was scheduled on June the 18th. So unfortunately I did not go into labor on my own and I had to have a C-section which eventually at that point I was okay with it because I had not had any contractions, my baby did not drop at all and um, I was not dilating. So my C-section was scheduled at 7.30 a.m. and we had to be at the hospital for 4.30. So the night before we dropped Lola off at my sister-in-love's house and she stayed there and the next morning my husband and I went to the hospital. So, where are you going? Going to my aunt's house, but tomorrow I'm gonna be a big sister because my mom is expecting a baby and she's almost here. So, whenever you come home, you'll be a big sister. Yeah, I'm really excited. Just like your big sis. Mm hmm. Okay. And it's a little, and it's a little girl. So, yeah. super excited. <laughs> so, due to COVID, um, laboring moms are only allowed one labor partner and that partner has to stay there the entire time if they leave at any moment They could not be let back into the facility. So thankfully my husband was there with me We got there at about 4 30 went up to the room and they started the whole process. We did the admission, registration, got my IV, started on fluids. I was hooked up to the monitor uh, They took my blood um, eventually, the doctor came in at about 7, spoke with me, she was get, uh, very encouraging, gave me some encouraging words, and then the anesthesiologist came in and spoke with me as well. After that, I walked, yes, walked to the surgery room. So at this point, I am a ball of emotions. I am nervous, I'm anxious to meet my sweet girl, and I am afraid like no lie there is a little bit of fear just because there is a trend these days of mothers dying while giving birth especially african-american mothers and that had me worried but i had my support partner my amazing husband and um my faith in god so i was gonna get through it either way so the anesthesiologist was a guy and he told me about what was gonna happen and he gave me my spinal tap. So I was freezing cold, first of all, like I was shivering and I had to like straddle the table and I had to have my back in a C so that they can find out where to place the tap. It didn't hurt, like it felt like a bee sting, but the, that was cold so I was shivering. So that was like weird. Um, so once they did that, it was immediate. Like the next 10 seconds, I started feeling like numbness from my chest down and it was scary, but it was so cool like that it could happen that fast. And so after that, I felt nothing. They put a Foley in me, didn't feel it. They put SEDs on my legs, did not feel that. She was cleaning my abdomen, didn't feel that, any of that. And so they put the sheet up, 
The CRNA was the one who was administering the anesthesia throughout the procedure and she was so amazing. You can tell that she was a nurse because she was just communicating, she was comforting me, explaining things to me. She was letting me know, you know, if you feel nauseated, let me know. Um, if you feel sick, if you're worried, she said, because the nausea can mean that my blood pressure is dropping. So she would have to titrate the meds. So she was good. And I was like, okay, nurse, CRNA. But um, so she was really, really good. I loved her. And her name was Crystal. The procedure started at around 7.44 and everything was just going. My husband was right there by my side. I'm not gonna lie, it's scary because you have the machines beeping, you have the suction going, you have the IV pumps, you have people talking, like it's a lot of stuff just going on and you don't see anything because there's a whole sheet. So my husband was holding my hand, rubbing my hair, just being so great. Eventually they got the baby out. And so as a mom, when you're in labor, you wait for the first cry. Like you're like, all right. And then they cry and you're like, okay, cool. <laughs> so she did her first cry and I was content with that. And then I was not worried about her anymore. I was more concerned about myself. There you go, good job. Mm, good job. Good job. Good job, so, um, Gary goes over there to help with Ava, make sure she's she's doing good, and he brings her to me. And honestly, like I really couldn't focus on her just because I'm trying to hear what the doctors are saying about me and what they're doing. And Gary's like, "Oh, she's so pretty. Look at her hair. She has this cute little birthmark on her leg." And I'm like, "Okay." Um, Ava, and then, but I'm trying to, trying to, you know, listen. So eventually they finish, they stitch me up and everything, and um, I go to recovery. So my C-section started at 7:44. Ava was born at 8:34, and my doctor was, she had a 9:30 case, and she said, "Hey, call them and tell them that they're gonna, I'm gonna be running late." So that's almost two hours. So during the C-section, I was alert, awake, able to communicate with you. When I went to recovery, I think they give you like a medication that makes you, um, that helps with pain, but it also makes you very nauseated and very drowsy because when I got to recovery, I was so sick. Like I, I felt so sick and I felt sleepy. I wasn't even like able to breastfeed Ava. And so my husband was able to kind of help and assist. And you know what, Gary really was the star throughout this because whenever she came he was there to help her and you know take pictures and then when I was in the recovery and I couldn't really do much he was there to kind of help her soothe her and so he did a really really good job with that um after recovery after spending two hours in recovery I went to my postpartum room so when my doctor came in to round on me after the procedure I wanted her to explain you know what happened because i wanted to know and so basically she said that i had a lot of scar tissue from my previous c-section and scar tissue is somewhat normal however the amount of scar tissue that i had was shocking for someone who only had one c-section um she said that my uterus was basically kind of stuck to my abdominal wall with scar tissue and she had to go in there and remove that in order to get to the baby. And so she called in some extra help. <clears throat> Number one, I thank God that I made it out of that because she could have not been smart enough to ask for help and something could have went completely wrong. Like I feel like asking for help was such a good decision on her part just because you never know. So you know when they say that nurses are the worst patients, um, I don't think I was a bad patient. I think that I was very good, sweet, nice, considerate patient just because I get it. Like I know how it is. Like I'm a nurse. Like, But um, the first night I felt like it was the worst night because I was itching all over from the medication that they gave 
and I was so uncomfortable. I had the Foley catheter in that I hate. I hate that Foley catheter. Like, I don't see how people keep that in for ever but i had the foley catheter in i was itching i had the scds on that was bothering me i couldn't get comfortable i had the iv in my hand that was going at a crazy rate and not only that my baby low ava ava had jaundice and so she had to get the phototherapy lights and so she, my sweet girl was like in a diaper in this little bassinet with the lights with this eye mask on and I just felt so bad for her because I know she was cold and I'm just like oh I'm uncomfortable I know she's uncomfortable so uh, it was the first night was a mess so I wanted to get out of bed so bad but I couldn't because the nurse wouldn't let me and I wanted to be compliant and every time she came in my SEDs was off and I'm just like look please let me get out of the bed so eventually she let me get up to the chair and I slept to the, I slept in the chair the whole night um, the next day was so much better. They took my Foley out at 6 a.m. and I was able to pee. She said if you pee twice on your own, then you can get the IV out. Did that, IV came out. I was able to shower, I did my hair. I felt better. Um, Ava, she still had to be on the, under the lights um, until about five o'clock that day. Then her levels were normal. So after that, we were able to hold her. I was able to feed her. Um, my pain was okay. I was in some pain, but they were giving me medication and then walking around helps too. The morning of the third day, my doctor did not visit me. She was off. Her associate came and she was like, how are you feeling? I was like, I'm good. Let's go discharge me. She was like, well, normally we keep, you know, C-sections. Uh, you know extra days just to make sure she said do you feel comfortable going home i said yes sis send me home please um so she discharged me and we came home and lola met ava for the first time which is the sweetest encounter she was so excited i have never seen lola that excited you look cute you. <laughs> can you see your shirt ooh, ooh. <laughs> back around just like that all right and then put your elbow up like that all right I'm so happy for Lola with her right. don't let her yeah, hair fall okay hold your elbow up it's gonna be some work she like oh I love it she don't need it right now but we'll just put it I don't on. think she likes it she had a lot of friends on your baby sister My recovery wasn't too bad. Um, I did have pain medication. Um, my scar, it, it was painful to move around the first few days, but each day got a little bit better. I was breastfeeding. That was a challenge at first, just because I am an oversupplier. So much milk. Like when your milk comes in, it's so overwhelming. So eventually got that under control. I just had my six week appointment and everything is healing perfectly. My incision is perfect. And um, my doctor told me that, um, yes, I can have more children. I just need to, um, if I do have to have a C-section again, then she will have another doctor in the room just in case. So now that she knows what to expect. However, um, she is open to me trying to have a V-back again. And she told me to remain hopeful because she just delivered a mom who had two C-sections and a V-back. So, and that mom was successful. So I'm hopeful, I'm thankful, I'm just very, very blessed. I go to work in about six weeks and uh, I am trying to figure out how I will do that, you know, with my newborn baby and it is a pandemic, so having to make sure I stay safe. Being a mom of two is very amazing. 
I feel like I do struggle a little bit just because the age gap, Lola is seven and Ava is seven weeks. And so they both need two completely different things from me. And I am trying to be a good mother to my newborn child who needs me every second of the day. And also be a good mom to my seven year old who I don't want her to feel neglected and left out. And I have to try and take care of myself while I go through this postpartum period. I feel like it is a struggle, but I'm just blessed and I'm thankful. And each day is a learning curve and I am appreciative and I wouldn't have it any other way. So I'm just thankful, 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 and grateful. Especially after having a miscarriage. I have my sweet girl here, my rainbow baby. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down in the comment section and I will answer them. Thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and you have a good day. Bye.